So welcome everybody, and I would like to thank very much organizer for, or, to organizers to, for giving me this opportunity to, to present um, you the, um, uh, the um, f uh, fluorescence inside to hybridization technique, and it's both uh, research and maybe more clinical uh, applications. So uh, I would like to first maybe show you just an overview of the uh, technique and then show you its uh, applications in the diagnostic field and uh, also in, in the research field. So the history uh, of inside hybridization has started in uh, uh, 1969 with the dis discovery that uh, the ribosomal RNA uh, hybridized to the amplified genes of the all sides of the uh, of the uh, of the top xenopus, and I would like to start with just giving you the the overview of the fish uh, procedure. So. Um, the basic elements of the inside hybridiz hybridizations is the uh, is the probe and the um, target. And first of all, we need to prepare the probe by labeling it to, for example, some fluorophore, and um, have some target sequence. And then we need to. Um, need to denaturate uh, both, uh, um, both the probe and the target sequence and uh, let them hybridize uh, for uh, some usually hours, uh, wash out the excess probe and uh, then we can proceed with the imaging. And there are different types of fish probes. So there are the probes that uh, mark, uh, for example, the whole um, chromosomes. They are called chromosome painting probes. There are the probes that mark uh, some regions of chromosomes, for example, long or short arms. And there are some probes that uh, mark uh, repetitive sequences, uh, like uh, centromeres or telomeres. There are the probes that uh, mark um, mark um, some uh, genetic loci and um, there are also the probes that uh, enable us to see the, the fusion of uh, some genetic loci and fish can be um, performed on uh, different uh, uh, cellular material from uh, like interface uh, nuclei to metaphase spread chromosomes uh, it can be performed on the bone marrow samples, peripheral blood samples, and also on the uh, fixed uh, um, and section tissue. And here are some examples of uh, fluorescence inside hybridization. This is the interface uh, nuclei with uh, uh, labeled uh, actin uh, beta uh, loci uh, with co-stained for uh, called the apparatus. Here is the fish on metaphase spread uh, showing the labeled uh, centromeres. Here is the fish on uh, sectioned uh, tissue, part uh, formal and fixed embedded tissue, using the chromosome painting probe uh, for chromosome uh, 9. This is the um, epithelial um, epithelial cells of uh, stomach. Uh, and I would like to just uh, start with some, um, some uh, just overview on uh, the uh, protocol uh, optimization and, uh, and uh, just, just on my example. This is just my example. So uh, for my, my work, it was very important to that our protocol meets this criteria. So we needed to have the uh, pretty structure of the nucleus preserved. We needed a very strong fish signal for the uh, quantitative image analysis. And also I wanted to visualize, uh, visualize um, certain um, proteins, for example, alpha-tubulin. 
And here it was very important to adapt uh, the inside the protocol to using the proper fixative, uh, um, testing different uh, different probes, uh, different hybridization buffers, um, using post fixation steps, uh, and uh, other things. Uh, yeah, and uh, in order to to show that uh, the 3D nuclear structure is not uh, perturbed, uh, I performed this analysis to uh, using different fixatives, and uh, so I measured um, uh, the area, the perimeter, the, the length of uh, nuclear axis uh, in order to choose the best uh, fixation, fixative uh, to um, to ensure that the 3D nuclear structure is not uh, perturbed. And here are some examples of, uh, uh, of images. Uh, here is um, inside the hybridization we're using different probes. And you can clearly see that uh, this probe with this hybridization buffer shows the most uh, intensive, uh, intensive um, staining. And uh, here is the optimization of the FISH protocol in order to visualize the alpha tubulin. And you can see that with, uh, in, with using these two protocols, the tubulin structure is not really preserved, whereas uh, here I can see nicely the, the microtubule uh, structure. Okay, so now I'd like to show you a few clinical applications from the, uh, both literature and from my, mm, my experience of using uh, in situ hybridization. So um, currently malaria is uh, diagnosed to using uh, the GEMSA staining, which is the, just a chromogenic uh, thing that it's not really specific. And in this um, paper, uh, they propose that uh, uh, the uh, malaria can be also diagnosed using this uh, fish uh, probes uh, in uh, different patients, and it recognizes different uh, species of, of uh, malaria. And also, currently, for um, like the basic methods so the, in the prenatal diagnostics uh, to detect uh, anaploides, like for example Down syndrome, uh, there's um, a method called uh, karyotyping is used, uh, where uh, the um, uh, amniocentic fluid is is uh, is taken and then the cells are um, cultured for a few days and then the, their metaphase uh, spreads the, uh, performed using this uh, uh, this cells but it uh, takes usually a few days at least uh, and then there's this uh, um, software that uh, that uh, enables uh, seeing the karyotype and the uh, Down syndrome can be diagnosed, but uh, um, fluorescence in situ hybridization uh, can give a result within 24 hours on this interface nuclei. And here is the example of such uh, uh, of uh, nuclei uh, mm, uh, with three additional uh, chromosomes uh, 21 and uh, two uh, chromosomes uh, 13. Uh, so it can uh, the advantage of uh, inside of hybridization here is uh, mainly the time, and which is important for uh, clinical decision making very often. And uh, fish can be also used to detect uh, micro deletion syndromes, like for example there is the uh, um, so-called D George uh, syndrome, uh, which is uh, associated with the loss of uh, of this uh, long um, 
uh, this uh, lo locus on the long arm of uh, chromosome 22 uh, and uh, you can see this is the the normal cell and this is a cell from a patient with the drug syndrome and you don't see this additional uh, red dot uh, from this uh, tuple 1 uh, chromosomal region. Um, fluorescence in cytohybridization can be also used to detect, to understand this complex uh, chromosomal uh, rearrangement like uh, uh, this is an example, and um, we can see. Um, um, and so these chromosomes are stained with uh, with uh, chromosome painting probes that are the probes that mark uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, full chromosomes. And uh, you can see, for example, this uh, chromosome five has a, a region of chromosome fourteen. This chromosome six has a region of chromosome 8, uh, where this chromosome 8 has multiple regions of chromosome 5, uh, uh, 6, and 2, and the same for this chromosome 14. So this, uh, uh, thanks to this inside of hybridization, we can understand how these uh, chromosomes are um, uh, built. Uh, the same, uh, what the fish gives us the, uh, can give us the idea of the uh, ring chromosome structure. So ring chromosomes are, um, are uh, uh, so basically when the double strand break or there is some telomer <coughs> dysfunction occur, uh, they are formed so-called ring chromosomes and uh, uh, fluorescence in cytohybridization can give us the, the overview on the, the structure of this, um, this uh, um, aberrant chromosomes. In cytohybridization can also be a good method to monitor the uh, disease progression and the chronal of, uh, evolution and this is uh, um, these are the cells from uh, patients uh, with uh, acute uh, lymphoid uh, leukemia. Mm. And uh, you can see that this, uh, these are the cells uh, at the, uh, from bone marrow at the initial diagnosis and these are the cells uh, after uh, first uh, uh, chemotherapy round. and. Uh, uh, thanks to this, we can uh, see which are the the clone, clones of, of uh, malignant cells that uh, uh, persist <coughs> after after chemotherapy, and this can serve as a better. Um, thanks to this, we can um, personalize the chemotherapy in, uh, in a better way. Um, the, the same is with the, um, with the fish for HER2, and HER2 is um, it's an oncogene that is very often, uh, that, that is present, uh, that it, it shows overexpression in about 20% of breast carcinomas. Mm. And uh, Usually, it's diagnosed uh, with uh, with immunohistochemistry, uh, and this um, diagnosis of the HER2 um, overexpression is very important because there is the uh, drug uh, available that targets this um, um, the HER2, which is called uh, trastuzumab, and but it's not. Uh, always present, the overexpression is not always present and the fluorescence in cytohybridization might serve as an as a additional uh, marker to, um, to uh, assign the patients for this uh, trastuzumab uh, therapy. And uh, the same in, uh, in, um, in the hematological field where there's uh, um, 
super omnipresent this uh, uh, fusion uh, gene fusion, which is uh, uh, fusion of um, two genes, BCR, ADL, that normally they are uh, located far away from each other, but in uh, some hematological malignancies, they are uh, located in uh, very close proximity, and then, then, then it's the the aberrant uh, protein is um, is present in this cell, and this also uh, presence of such uh, gene fusion might uh, help to um, assign patients to to therapy with uh, imatinib. So in um, in the hematological field, there there are a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, a lot of different uh, uh, gene uh, fishes uh, used in, uh, to diagnose and to uh, assess prognosis for many different uh, uh, malignancies. And here are some uh, probes that are um, commercially available and are are used to, to um, make uh, the decision making in this, uh, in this malignancies uh, better. And um, here's something from my um, PhD project. So, so in my, during my PhD project, I was working on circulating tumor cells and there are the cells that they detach from the primary tumor and they are present in the blood uh, circulation. And those are the cells that uh, may form uh, metastasis. So uh, I detected the, the cells in the peripheral blood, but to confirm that they are, so I used uh, multiple different markers <coughs> specific for this uh, tumor types. Uh, but to confirm that they are uh, really um, of uh, tumor origin, I performed FISH for this uh, 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 using this probe that marked the short arm of chromosome 12. And uh, indeed, I found that uh, in, uh, in these tumor cells, very often uh, there's additional copies of this chromosomal region. Uh, were found, which was not found in the in the lymphocyte here, and the same here. So here are like four copies of this uh, chromosomal region, mm, and two copies of uh, centromere. And in this cell, for example, there are five copies um, of centromere and twelve, and five copies of of the this uh, short. Uh, short arm of chromosome 12 uh, region, and that was uh, very similar to the uh, to the amplification that I also found in uh, in primary um, primary tumors from these patients. And the same thing uh, I performed on the circulating tumor uh, cells from uh, from prostate cancer patients. So the these tumor cells were detected using um, automated device. Uh, then they were fixed uh, and um, they were hybrid. Uh, the natural the probes were denaturated and hybridized with this with this uh, detected uh, cells. Mm. And then they were uh, scanned again, and uh, we found the presence of this uh, fusion. Uh, Gene fusion that is uh, associated with the, with the, uh, androgen independence. So it might uh, serve as a uh, marker to personalize the therapy for, for these patients. Okay, and now I would like to show you some uh, research applications of the uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization techno technique. And uh, so I would like to start with this uh, new approach, how to, how to visualize the sequences in, in the, the nucleus. So a few years ago, there was this um, public 
publication published showing that using this um, a nuclease deficient um, uh, Cas9 labeled with uh, EGFP uh, together with this um, guided RNA um, targeting specific sequences, we can uh, visualize the DNA sequences without uh, the maturation step. So normally we need to uh, destroy this double uh, DNA strand, and for this uh, we don't uh, uh, have this need. And here you can uh, here you have some <coughs> some images, uh, and they also perform the live cell imaging to visualize the the telomeres in living cells. And here you can appreciate the the live cell uh, imaging of um, of telomeres. And uh, so using the um, so now I will go now I will show you some uh, some uh, um, some um, data from my uh, current project. So using the inside hybridization, we can also uh, visualize uh, mRNA, and this is the uh, sing, um, single molecule uh, mRNA, and uh, you can see the. Uh, beta actin mRNA in magenta, uh, beta actin protein in green, and this is the nucleus. And we can also appreciate the transcription size of this uh, beta actin mRNA. Mm -hmm. And using this um, fish for uh, for uh, RNA, we can. Uh, quantify mRNA in single cells and we can also um, check the subcellular localization of, uh, of mRNA and uh, what I'm com currently doing is um, uh, analyzing mu mu uh, mRNA distribution in, in uh, multiple cells and then I'm performing such, such maps so here for example you have the uh, the distribution of uh, beta actin mRNA in more than 200 cells, and, uh, and this is the distribution of uh, um, uh, transcription size for this beta actin mRNA and the distribution of the beta actin protein. And uh, thanks to this, uh, we can. We can uh, map and uh, quantify in uh, many, many cells this, uh, uh, this um, mRNA localization. Mm. And the like, second part of my project, it's about uh, visualizing the chromosome territories. And so uh, here is the human uh, fibroblast. Here, the, um, here's the nu nu nucleus of the human fibroblast with uh, with the stained uh, chromosome territories. Of, so here are all the all the chromosomes. And what you can appreciate from this uh, picture is that the chromosome uh, chromosomes are not like uh, randomly. Uh, positioned in the nucleus, but they occupy the district uh, territories. And uh, usually what, um, what uh, people look at, they just look at the distribution of, um, of chromosome, if it's in the periphery, if it's in, or, or if it's in the central, so the radial distribution of the, of the chromosome. But uh, what we wanted to do, we wanted to look at the chromosome distribution in the uh, polarized cells. So in order to do this, we designed uh, such a pattern where, uh, so this is like a kind of teardrop shape, where the Golgi and centrosomes are 
position toward this uh, sharp edge of the cell. Mm. And uh, I performed the uh, mm, 3D fish on these cells. Uh, so here we have uh, chromosome uh, 3, here we have the nucleus, and here we have the tubulin. And then after uh, collecting multiple uh, microscopic images and uh, uh, registering all the images to the to the to, to each other, to, um, I performed such uh, I prepared such a map of uh, preferential chromosome positions in uh, in the large population of cells. And uh, here are the results. So uh, here is the intensity of uh, uh, DAPI signal. And uh, here are the uh, intensity profiles of the <coughs> um, different uh, chromosome positions. So uh, chromosome 3, chromosome 9, 18, and 22. And uh, what you can uh, see on these maps is that some uh, chrom uh, chromosomes tend to position towards the um, blunt edge of the uh, of this teardrop shape, whereas some chromosomes tend to position uh, themselves towards the, the sharp edge of the cell. And so this is uh, what I'm currently doing. So uh, I would like to thank. Uh, uh, Paulo very much and, uh, and for my institute and um, thank you very much for your attention.